some of these are. But before we do, let me ask you, how many of you are familiar with Eastern medicine, like Chinese medicine? Oh, okay, so maybe we have uh, quite a few of you, but just in case you are not familiar with it. So my question is, what is the basic principle of disease in Chinese medicine? Illness is the result of an imbalance in yang construction of and blood. And you go, what? What is that? What is yin yang? What is qi? What is blood? Well, to just make it simple, right? These are just terminology that describe your functions and your substances of the body. Look, functions, right? Yin and yang are just polar opposite. They represent one side of the coin. So. We have two things we need to be concerned about. One is function in our body. Can you have too much function? Hyper. Can you have too little function? Hypo. Thyroid, for example. If you have too high of thyroid function, you have hyperthyroid, so you can't keep your weight on, you lose your hair, you go to the bathroom you know, 10 times a day, you're jittery, anxious all the time, you can't sleep. You're hot. That's young. Too young. Now, if you have hypothyroid, how would you feel? What? You're tired all the time. You can't get out of bed. You're cold. You're chilled. You can't seem to lose that 20 pounds that you've been trying to lose for the last 20 years. And in fact, you eat nothing, and yet you seem to gain weight. You're constipated. You're losing hair too, and your skin is dry. So pretty soon, if this goes on, you will be bald. Fact. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't sound good to me. But anyway, so uh, so what do you think? You're in balance, of course. You know, the Chinese have known all this time for thousands of years. Well, you either have too much or too little. Let's just calibrate it. And substance the same way. You know, anything you can have too little. We, we want balance. We want just right. Because we have this optimal range where we have to function in. Our pH, for example, acid alkaline balance. It's got to be around 7.3. Or around it. You're too acidic, you have, too, you have increased chance of heart disease, uh, degenerative disease, cancer, infections, immune breakdowns, you know, inflammation. And if you have, if you're too alkaline, well, you have some other problems too. You know, functionally, you're just not very efficient. And obstruction of qi and blood simply means you don't flow. Circulation, movement, Right? If you don't have circulation, how is your body going to deliver nutrients to your vital organs and get rid of waste products? So, and in fact, if that doesn't happen, that it really underlies the aging process. Okay? Here's a quote from the Yellow Emperor's Passage, the oldest medical book in the world. Health and well-being can be achieved only by remaining centered in spirit. Guarding against the squander of energy, promoting the constant flow of qi and blood, maintaining harmonious balance of yin yang, adapting to the changing seasons and yearly macrocosmic influences, and nourishing oneself preventatively. This is the way to a long and happy life. Right there, I mean, this sort of paragraph summarizes how to live healthy, long, and happy lives. And so let's find out. In my book, Secrets of Self Healing, I outline the seven key concepts of wellness medicine. They are optimal health, whole person, prevention, self healing, personalized care, healing partnership, and integration. Let's go into the more in depth later. Optimal health. This is the goal of wellness medicine. Right? This is the active pursuit of the best possible functioning and balance of your whole body, body, mind, and spirit. Because if you're Overdeveloped, you know, let's say physically, but you're underdeveloped in your mind or spirit, then you might remind me of, no, not Arnold. Um, I'm sorry, he, he's, he's, he's our governor, I, I should say. That. Um, he's actually very smart, by the way. He just gives the impression that he's. Um, anyway, but. So you can't be out of balance in each. You want you want optimal function so that you can be you can be free to actualize your potential. I mean, you're here for a reason, I think, and a purpose, 
I hope you have one. But that's okay if you don't. I know what you want. You want to be healthy. You don't want to suffer. How many people here want to suffer? <laughs> hmm. I, I thought religion promotes suffering. <laughs> are you saying to me that none of you here are religious? Okay. Now, suffering. Okay. It seems universal. None of you want to suffer. So you want health. And because only by having health will you have happiness. Because it's kind of hard to be happy if, if you're hooked up to an IV. All right. Whole person. This is the focus. Focus of wellness medicine. Right? Well, because we can't have partialness. Our inner lives, our outer lives, our relationship with other people and our environment must always be balanced and harmonized. Right? And so, um, my father, upon retirement, gave me this wonderful thing to remember. He said, look, disease is nothing but a symptom of a life out of balance. So when someone comes to you and they're ill, you have to also look at their life and see where their balance is. It might be the 28-ounce state they had the night before. Very wise decision because how would you feel after eating a 28-ounce piece of steak? probably feel very bloated, very heavy, and you might need to have some antacids because there's no way to produce enough acid and enzyme to break all that down. So probably sit in your intestines and putrefy and create lots of gas. Because fermentation is what causes gas. All right. So in other words, if I am just treating the patient for their stomach problem and keep giving them medication and all this and that without asking them, now, what is it that you eat for dinner every day? Or I would not be doing my job because a patient will perpetually, continually have stomach problems for the rest of his or life. So we have to look beyond just the symptom. But disease is great because when we suffer, it wakes us up. It's a wake up call and says, hey guy, you better look at what you're doing. What you eat, how you're living your life, how you feel emotionally, your relationships, all of that. You gotta look at that. It's a little wake up call. Prevention. This is the heart of wellness medicine because you know what? Boy, if you can take care of things before they begin, that would be the wisest thing because then you don't have to suffer. So, or take care of problems that are small. The yellow emperor once said to his, uh, his uh, court physician, he said, you know, there are three types of physicians. The first type is called the superior physician. Well, a superior physician treats illness before the illness begins. And the mediocre physician, the second type, treats an illness as it's beginning. And the inferior physician treats illness only after the illness has developed. And what's the amazing thing is, he uttered these words 5,000 years ago. He puts us all to shame because we're all inferior physicians because we only see patients after they're ill. But I'm hoping to at least become a little mediocre <laughs> by, you know, educating you so that you can be aware of little problems as they begin and you can take care of it right away. Okay, so healthy lifestyle, energy balance, prevention of illness, right? I mean, this is what we want to do. And preventive care uh, makes a lot of sense, saves you grief and money and time, my goodness. So the next principle is self-healing. This is the power that's innate in each and every one of us. We all have this. Ever cut yourself? What happens? A week later, scabs over, and you're fine. Catch a cold, your immune system gears up, fights the cold, and then you feel better. So your body is inherently capable of healing itself. But are you helping your body, or are you against your body? How many people think that your lifestyle sometimes may be against your body? Okay. Remember that job of cookie you had last night? I just won. You decided, yeah, oh, there's like four left. I should just finish it off. Yeah. 
Yeah. What do you think happened? Well, let's see. Blood sugar went up, and your pancreas pumped all kinds of insulin to try to get that back down, and most of that sugar went to store up as fat. And then afterwards, you feel lousy because, number one, your blood sugar now is too low, right? The hypoglycemia that comes. So you feel kind of sluggish, tired, agitated, irritable. And number two, you are now stricken with the worst suffering of all. You know what that is? Guilt. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So the aim of what we try to do as wellness practitioners, and uh, so that would include MDs who are interested in preventive health, as well as acupuncturists and uh, Qigong practitioners, and you know, really educate each patient on how to use this power to really facilitate the healing process.